Hi, this is Philip Metris, and this is my poem called Prayer. Wither me to within me, welt me to wheel me common again, withdraw to wear me weary, over me to hover and lover again, before me to form and perform me, round me to rill me liquid incisions, behind me to hunt and haunt me, down me to drown indecision. Bury me to seed me, bloom me in loam me, ground me to meal me, knead me to rise, raise me to your mouth, rive me to river me, end me to unmend me, rend me to render me. This is Philip Metris, and this is from a poem called Home Front. You look at me, looking at you. How close the words creation and cremation. How in Hebrew, Adam is kin to dust. How the stars swam in Abraham's eyes, his profligate future. Uncountable windows of light, flashing open-eyed. The towers burn down into themselves, just like a cigarette, the poet laureate wanted to say, and did on air, knowing that distance makes metaphors terrifying and the world less so, dividing the night from night. How to describe the twisted angles and planes. Picasso, a picture is a sum of destructions. The wind draws dust into us. Thus E, who held Klieg lights at ground zero, carries the towers in lung roots. A kind of seeding, this seeing. We are windows, half open, half reflecting, trying to impersonate someone who can breathe. This is Philip Metris. And this is from Homefront. As if somehow I were responsible. Patriotism is a feeling, the student wrote, that is rotted deep inside every one of us, and it's hard to let something such as your country go to shame. The photos of hijackers looked like a war hall of our family album, the women oddly absent, portraits bleared in displaced layers of ink, who fed you? Who changed you? Who memorized your hands? Who breathed you in? The ex-editor of Life lays down the old rule of thumb in journalism. One person dead in your paper's hometown equals five dead the next town over equals 50 dead in the next state or 5,000 dead in China. The homeland is late blue and tastes of metal like blood in the mouth. My cousins, my demons, my plotting and foiled selves. What have you done? What have we done with us? This is Philip Metris, and this is a poem called From Homefront. As if somehow I were responsible. Patriotism is a feeling, the student wrote, that is rotted deep inside every one of us, and it's hard to let something, such as your country, go to shame. The photos of hijackers look like a war hall of our family album, the women oddly absent, portraits bleared in displaced layers of ink. Who fed you? Who changed you? Who memorized your hands? Who breathed you in? The ex-editor of Life lays down the old rule of thumb in journalism. One person dead in your paper's hometown equals five dead the next town over equals 50 dead in the next state or 5,000 dead in China. The homeland is late blue and tastes of metal like blood in the mouth. My cousins, my demons, my plotting and foiled selves, what have you done? What have we done with us? This is Philip Metris, and this is From Homefront. 
On the flight overseas, the rows dotted with isolados, each an island of eyes. I was looking for, looking like, Ivan Zdanov. What outside is a cross, inside is a window. A white woman across the aisle eyed me the entire flight. Her gaze widened and neck craned as I, her eyes, slowly removed her eyes, my shoes. What could I say? Sometimes I'm afraid I'm carrying a bomb, that I'm a sleeper and don't know when I'll awaken. I should have said, identity isn't an end. It's a portal, a deportation from the country of mirrors, an inflection within a question, punctuation in the sentence of birth. I said nothing. Later, visiting a Quaker meeting, I sat among scattered chairs, on the shores of breathing, all eyes shut, I waited. Silence our rudder. Silence our harbor. This is Philip Metris reading my poem, Letter to Petersburg. Window to the wistful, you kept me up at nights, your light tethered me to beds, unmateable, untranslatable. Your school children threw snowballs over the mass grave at Piskaryovsky, apparition of Gondlevsky shaking Gogol and Dostoevsky, daymares the neural galleries and sculleries. I lose and lure you, unowned and owed. Your cold mouth, your winter eyes, I wanted to erase my face in your face, ascending as I descended the escalator sans guile and liar, turning so I could see what I would lose forever, saffron insides of apartments. You bled your gold and gilded the gray outside, where my words heard not the you of you, an old song harped on a strand of sand where torn plastic tarps like sails, ghost ship of a building skeleton, flagellate the stone, shred themselves a history of inward windows. O oh, windward gate, locked and jawed, I've gotten no closer to you than to my death. Here at the river of never, I want to burn posthumously like a word, to say farewell and beg forgiveness in one breath, and cede you to you, return whatever I've taken, this sudden blood on my tongue, if only to lift the holy psalter of you, and kneel before the soiled altar of you, and open my broken throat. Hi, this is Philip Metris reading my poem, Outside Cresty Prison. Outside Cresty Prison. A woman conducts a movement for clouds in the key of Cyrillic. After each flourish returns her finger to its original position and pauses. To watch for the locked, beyond stone walls to beckon. The prison like a clock stopped and gnawing the cuckoo inside. The empty courtyard orchestra pit of dumpster and clothesline. Her language an arrow, arcing an invisible word-made marrow. In the far barred window, a hand she could find in a photograph of hands, flagging, understand, I understand. Smoke sphere of cigarette delivered from lungs she once breathed for. How long can she stand under and sign her life? on this invisible line. This is Philip Metris reading my poem For the Prison of Skin. One. You threw me down, Lord, on the bed I did not know I was making unmade. Your arms held me down until I could feel the panic of prey, could taste the bitter of ends, the tunnel stripped of light, Lord. You pressed your terrible weight against the length of my indivisible body, your invisible, inexorable weight, your hands around my neck until I could see nothing but the black in front of me, your hurting hole behind me, in me now shivering, 
praying for this prison of skin to release this voice to air, that these needle nerves unshackle the this I am, the this you are. 2. Lord, I am not worthy. I am unwealthy without you, but I am not unwilled, am not still in you. Yes, my soul is restless and does not rest in you, my Lord, and I'm not ready to be seized by you in receiving you. Unsteady in swells of you, I'm unmasted in the squall of you, in the sea of you, cannot outlast you. But only say the word and I shall be hurled from all hurt, thrown beyond shoals, unswallowed in shallows. Say the word and I shall be held. Will the world, and I shall be born. Say it, and I shall be beheld, and hold you, my Lord. Say it with my mouth. I'm yours. 3. Lord, in the fracture of this bleakest black, under this roof, in the dying dark, let me turn and slide my aching hips up to the back of this day. Curl my arm beneath the still dreaming side of this day, Lord. Let me cup the soft breast of this day, tender as the tender child who opened its door with loving suck. Let me bury my face in the fragrant scalp of this day. Then turn this day toward me. Open my eyes to eyes now leading everything to light, and stroke the dream-flung hair that frames the lovely face of this day that breaks into waking. 